Bill Wakes joining me, a 15 plus year veteran of the, the sport of Agile and a major thought leader and contributor in the space. Thanks for joining me, Bill. Hi, Alex, thanks. You do a lot of work with XP, uh, among other things. Can you talk a little bit about the, the rubric of YAGNI and kind of where, where does that come from? Why do we need to talk about that? And how does the, the, the ideas and discussions around that help teams be more effective? Sure. Um, YAGNI stands for you, you aren't going to need it or you ain't going to need it. And uh, I think maybe Ron Jeffries or, uh, probably put the acronym together um, from, from that first XP team. And it's, it's really the notion to say, you know, um, how much should we plan now and implement now versus uh, are we able to implement things later? So um, if, you're, if you're in an environment like start with a waterfall kind of thing, I'm going to define the whole system and then design the whole thing and then uh, implement it. And then, then the pieces will be there and we're using them. And you can kind of get in a mindset that says, you know, I have to build this whole, uh, say, database interface layer before I start anything else. And, uh, you know, the, the Yagni kind of idea says, let's, let's just deliver little pieces of it as a time. If the first story only needs this part of the database layer, then let's just do that piece of the database layer. And then the next story might need some more and use some of the first part and, and do that and keep the system clean and, and uh, in good shape as we go and evolve those pieces rather than having to pay for the whole thing up front. And uh, you, know, you, you have to build some skill in doing things in an evolutionary way, but what it gives you is you haven't spent a lot of effort on things that you don't really need yet. And um, like so many other things, we're not so good at guessing. And a lot of times we kind of spin up a very elaborate solution. And then when it comes down to it, it really is overkill for what we were doing. And if we did it in small bites, we'd realize you know, it shouldn't have been that hard. And uh, all the time that we would have spent on that, we can now you know, take out of our development and, and apply it to something else. So we're, we're hoping to come out ahead. Once in a while, we might guess wrong and we need the elaborate structure. But uh, you know, we, we've we've saved that time for that because of all the times we save time. And and where do you think that, I mean, why do we need to have this discussion at all? I mean, where do you think the uh, the tendency to want to build a more elaborate um, construction than, than might be necessary, where do you think that comes from? Yeah, I, I think part, partly it's training. I mean, I think a lot of people have been trained to think that way in terms of um, designing some, some complete thing. Um, and I think there's there's sometimes a sense of like, oh, I'll be more efficient if I just focus in on this and, and get this all done now while I'm in here. Um, but uh, you know that that only kind of works if you're always consistently right about things. And uh, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm smart enough and I'm wrong often enough when I'm paying attention to <laughs> whether I was right or wrong. So um, you know, it's like, oh, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm willing to take the more small bite thing because of that. But uh, it, it's, it's definitely a natural tendency to think, oh, I want to just own this piece and, and get it done. And is there a tension between thoughtful software architectures and doing things in small bits at a time? I mean, can you, can you get both of those things if you play your cards right? Well, I, I think you can get a lot of it. I'm, I'm not sure you can say, I never need to do any architectural thinking up front or anything like that. But I think, um, you know, if you if you kind of structure things to to learn early on, um, I think the the advantage you have is you know if you're the stories you're working on first are the critical ones for the system, and almost always those are the ones that are critical for the architecture of the system. And uh, you know, if I'm a credit card processor and uh, we're we're processing uh, credit card transactions, you know, that's the thing that happens millions of times a day, and I know for my system, I've got to be able to tolerate that. You know, some some story like that is going to come through pretty early on. It gives me an opportunity to say, like, let's explore the performance aspects of this and the scalability and the other the other kind of non-functional things we need, and and make sure we're growing in a way that supports that. But it also lets me just focus, you know, get the the earliest pieces going and uh, and and let them go. So the the priority we get from those early ones can help drive what the the key drivers in the architecture are as well. Let's talk a little bit about it, how this works with the individual. I mean, you're you're working with a team. A developer says, you know, Bill, I don't I don't know about you know this Yagni thing. I've read about it. It sounds okay in theory, but um, 
Well, I, you know, I'm not sure if this is the right idea, Bill. What, how do I know if this is the right thing for me and how am I going to see it working if I actually try it? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's um, it's one of those things. I, I like to encourage teams to try experiments and uh, uh, take things. So even, um, I guess, my my... I say trick, you know, I should say technique, but one of my, <laughs> one of my techniques is to say, you know, you may, you may disagree that this, uh, this will work for you, but it could still be in your uh, favor to run the experiment because if we run the experiment and it comes out the way you think it's going to, you won't have to hear about it for months and months because the team will agree. Yeah, we tried it. It didn't work. So try the experiment, even if you don't think it's going to work, if, if it feels like there's a chance and uh, the, the team's behind it, you know, either way you can support the experiment and find some piece and, and learn whether it's going to help you or not. Um, you know, I, I don't know, you, you don't have to jump into everything all at once, but I think a lot of times you can, you can try and find those pieces. And the reality is, you know, if a system is going to last for multiple, multiple years, you know, it, it's going to have version one, version two, version three, or 1.1, 1.2 and so on. And uh, every one of those is an evolutionary, version of your system we're just speeding up the intervals on that and trying to uh, uh, take advantage of that as at a smaller scale that's great that's some really practical advice on on how to think about approaching agile from a development standpoint thanks bill sure thanks Alex.